Have you got your eye on the M1 Mac Mini, but you're worried about the next version suddenly arriving and giving you buyer's remorse? This is the video to watch. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. If you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. I've waxed lyrical about this, which is the M1 Mac Mini. I've used it for nearly a year to produce about 80 videos for this channel. And that meant really putting this thing through its paces. So every week, two videos, Final Cut Pro, loads of editing, and it never, ever sweated. Now I have experienced a couple of issues with it, namely Bluetooth problems and a lack of ports occasionally, but they're actually minor gripes in the great scheme of things. More importantly, I think I've spent long enough with this computer to give you some solid buying advice. We are, after all, heading into a new year very soon, which will undoubtedly be full of brand new Apple products. What if one of them is a new version of this, but you want or need an M1 Mac Mini now? Here's everything you need to know. So what could the next Mac Mini be like? Well, I've made a video about this, which I'll link to above. Now, I've got a couple of desires of my own for the next version of the Mac Mini. Namely, I just want Apple to put the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips that are currently in the new MacBook Pros into the Mac Mini. And that's mainly because they're such powerful chips. And the idea of putting them in a Mac Mini, which is always connected to power, so it doesn't have the same kind of thermal constraints potentially as the MacBook Pro, is very, very exciting. I'd also love some more ports. I would love to see an SD card slot on the back of this, for example. Some more USB-A, ideally, please, Apple. And if they can, chuck in a couple more USB-C as well. I'd also like a more stable Bluetooth connection. Not everyone has this issue, but I have been plagued with Bluetooth problems with this computer. So if Apple fixed that, give us more ports and just put the M1 Pro and M1 Max into this, I'll be happy. But what are we likely to see? Well, this is really tough because unlike lots of other Apple products, there's barely been any rumors about the next Mac Mini. There's been talk about it being like a mini tower version of the current Mac Pro, or just a slightly updated design that we see here. Now, rumors are nothing to go by these days. They're very inconsistent, and as 2021 has proven, not particularly reliable. But I think the chances are, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, as much as I want to see them in the next version of this, that's very much in the balance. I think we're far more likely to see a version of this computer with the rumored M2 chip. And the M2 chip is the successor to the M1 chip, obviously, and we believe that is designated for the next generation MacBook Air. So in theory, it would make sense to put that chip into a new Mac Mini as well. We might get all of it. We might get the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the M2. Who knows? We might even get a completely different chip they put into this. There could also be a new design, but again, no idea what that's going to look like. Admittedly, that's less of an issue with the Mac Mini because most people just plonk it on their desk or they rack mount it. So as long as you can do both of those things without it taking up too much space or being an issue for rack mount people, then that's fine. Apple can do pretty much what they want with the design as long as it doesn't impact the power of this thing. So with those things in mind, let's think why you might want to buy one now and why you might want to wait. Why should you buy an M1 Mac Mini now? Because they are fantastic computers. I'll leave a link above to my full review of the M1 Mac Mini, but a little spoiler, and to save you a bit of time, I think it is the best desktop computer, the best headless desktop computer I've ever used. And by headless, I mean that it doesn't come with a monitor, but that's just how this computer works. It is just a computer. That's all you get, basically. But what you get inside of this thing it's just incredible. And like I mentioned earlier, this has completely ran this channel up until now. It's been replaced, unfortunately, by this, or fortunately, by the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But in all reality, if I wasn't reviewing Apple stuff, I would have carried on with this. It was absolutely fine, even with this camera, which is a Sony FX3. It was struggling a little bit occasionally here and there, but it was not a showstopper whatsoever. Apart from the odd pause here or there, it would chew through footage from this camera, which is 4K, 10 bit, 422 color with ease. So at the moment, if you buy one from Apple, it is 699, either dollars or pounds, and that gets you the base spec version with the eight core GPU, eight core CPU, 256 gig of storage, and the eight gig of unified memory. That's such a good deal for a Mac, particularly a Mac with an M1 chip in it. Now, bear in mind, you do, like I say, have to buy a monitor, keyboard, mouse. It doesn't come with any of that, but you can still build a rig, which is well below a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars, and it's still incredibly powerful. So there's a couple of reasons to buy one now without waiting. One of them is because I'm not the only person singing its praises. This has a huge fan base among tech YouTubers and people who have got their hands on the M1 version. And Bluetooth issues aside, which you may not be affected by, it is just an absolute workhorse. It never lets you down. 
But more importantly, the reason you should buy one of these now if you either want one or need one is because we don't know when the next version is going to arrive or if it even will arrive. I don't think they are going to kill off the Mac Mini. I think they love it as much as we do. But it could arrive in January. It could arrive in March. It could arrive in the summer. It could arrive a year today. It could arrive in 2023, 2024. We have literally no idea. So if you want an M1 Mac Mini now, just go and buy one. Trust me, you will not regret it. Why shouldn't you buy an M1 Mac Mini now? Before I started filming this, I sat down and wrote down a few bullet points about the reasons why you should, and I was gonna do the exact same thing as to why you shouldn't buy one now, and I couldn't think of a single reason. That wasn't the case with the M1 MacBook Air. If you watched that video, I had a few reasons why you may want to wait for the next version of that, but it's just not the same thing with the Mac Mini. And the reason for that, sorry to sound like a broken record, is that there are no substantial rumors or evidence that a new version of the Mac Mini is on the way. And that could be for three reasons. One of them could be that Apple is being very tight-lipped about this. The second is that they are planning on releasing one, but it's not for a little while. And the third is that they are actually killing it off. Now, just to reiterate, I don't think they're killing the Mac Mini, but I get the impression we're not going to see the next one for a little while. But regardless, the sheer amount of uncertainty about the next Mac Mini means that you should not hold back buying one if you either want one for work or for a hobby or whatever it might be, or if you need one to replace an outgoing machine. Just go and buy it. Now, if you're considering between the M1 Mac Mini and the M1 MacBook Air, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I talk about the same thing with the MacBook Air. So should you buy one now or should you wait for the next version? But until next time, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.